In this video, we're going to go over a solution to the CSS selectors problem set. And I'm just going to go over every problem from the top down. So feel free to fast forward if there's just one or two that you had trouble with. So we did the first one together in the um, initial video. Give the body element a background of this color. So we just say body background is this color. Save this. Let's go ahead and load it up in the browser. Refresh. And you can see we get a gray background. So the next one is make the H1 element this color. So the same thing, except rather than background, we just set color. We save, and here's our H1, it turns purple. Remember, if we had more than one H1 on the page, they would all be purple. So this next one is make all H2 elements orange. So exact same selector as the above two. And then to make it orange, I'm just gonna use the built-in orange color, but you could use any other color system. And you can see we get every H2, there's four of them, they turn orange. So next up, I'm just going to shift this over to the side. Make all LI elements blue. Pick your own hexadecimal blue. So to do that, we select all LIs, and then we give them a color. And we're going to do a hexadecimal blue. So you could put anything here as long as it's more blue than anything else. So remember the first channel is red, then the next two are green. So we'll do a little bit of green. Let's do, and then a bunch of blue. Save that. And let's take a look at the LIs. And you can see we get blue LIs. So now change the background on every paragraph to be yellow. It's just one more where we select every element of a type, so all paragraphs, background, yellow, save, and we get a bunch of yellow paragraphs. Next up, select all inputs and give them a three pixel red border. So input, border, and there's a few ways of doing this. We can do it all at once. Border, three pixel, solid red. And you can see our two inputs have a three pixel solid red border, or we could do these separately. Border color is red. Border width is three pixels. And finally, border style is solid. For pretty obvious reasons, it's a lot easier to do this, but occasionally you'll want to, and we'll do this when we get to JavaScript, we'll want to just update one part. So when a user hovers over something, we want to change it from a red border to a green border. Well, we might just want to change the color and we can leave the width and the style how they are. So I'm going to leave it like this. Next, we're now moving on to the class selector. So give everything with the class hello a white background. And if we look at the HTML, there's actually just one thing, this first paragraph inside this div with class hello. So we select that class dot hello background white. And you can see we get this paragraph here turns white. Next up, give the element with ID special a two pixel solid blue border. Pick your own RGB blue. So same thing again, this time instead of a dot, we use the hash sign or the octothorpe and then the name of the ID, which you can see again is right here, ID is special. And then we want to give it a two pixel solid border. So two pixel solid and then an RGB blue. And so we'll have zero red, 100 green, 200 blue. And if we refresh that, you can see we get, a, it's pretty slight, but a two pixel blue border around this paragraph with the ID. Next up, make all the paragraphs that are nested inside of divs 25 pixel font. And the hint is, use this property, font dash size 25 pixels. So what we need to do here is rather than select all paragraphs, we only want paragraphs that are inside of a div. So you can see there are some, like this one here, that is not inside a div. We don't want those to be 25 pixels in font size. So we use this descendant selector where we say div and then inside of that div, all paragraphs. So paragraphs that live in any div, it doesn't matter 
um, which div, just any paragraphs in any divs. We'll uh, select them and give them font size 25 pixels. Save that, refresh. You can see that these all get bigger, but these ones that say paragraph not inside a div don't get bigger because they're not inside of a div. Next up, make only inputs with type text have a gray background. So this is another type of selector and it's based off of an attribute. So the attribute we wanna do is find where type is equal to text. So basically just this input right here, type equals text. And so the way that we do that, we're gonna type input and then uh, square braces, and uh, yep, square braces, and then inside of there, the attribute, which is type, and we're looking for where it's equal to text, and then we're just going to say background gray. And then if we scroll down here and refresh, keep your eye right here, you can see we get a gray background. So again, this one's useful if we wanted to select all um, links that went to Google, we would select based off of href or we could select off of any other attribute out there. So next up, give both paragraphs inside the third div a pink background. So this one gets a little bit crazy. So let's take a look at the HTML. Here's our third div. The first one is here. The second one is here. And the third one is here. And there's two paragraphs and we wanna select both of them and give them a pink background. So what we did before was select all paragraphs inside of all divs. That won't work here. What we do, what we do want to do is select all paragraphs inside of the third div on the page. And the way that we can specify the third div is to use nth of type. So we'll say div nth of type three. So that's going to give us a third div. And then inside of that, all paragraphs. And then we're just going to say background is pink and save refresh and let's double check here's our first div here is the second div and here's the third div start the two paragraphs start with cardigan and i'm the second paragraph there we go cardigan i'm the second paragraph next up give the second paragraph inside the third div a five pixel border white border so this one's very similar except we only want the second paragraph inside the third div so just this one so we do the same thing where we select the third div, nth of type three, and then rather than all paragraphs, we're then gonna do paragraph nth of type, and we want the second one. So we can combine them. This is going to select the second paragraph inside of the third div. And we wanna give it a five pixel white border. Border, five pixel solid white. There we go, here's our five pixel solid white border on the second paragraph in the div, not the first one. Next up, make the EM in the third div element white and 20 pixel font. So that's this EM right here, Cronut Skateboard. If you don't know what Cronut is, it's very delicious, maybe overrated, definitely overpriced um, pastry out of New York City. It is a donut and a croissant. So definitely uh, at home inside of the hipster ipsum vocabulary here. And we're going to take that EM and we're going to make it white and 20 pixels font. So just like before, we need to select the third div three and then just the EM inside. And this will select all EMs, and it just happens that there's only one. But if there were more than one, we might want to say EM first of type or EM instead of a paragraph. But I'll just leave it as this for now. And we want to give it white color and 20 pixel font. So color white and font size 20 pixel. And just uh, to remind you, we are going to spend time talking about fonts and font size and a bunch of other things in future videos. There we go. It's white and the font size changes. 
So now we're on to some of the bonus exercises, which are some of my favorite. They're some of the more obscure, the more interesting ways of selecting things and manipulating them. So to start, let's look at making all checked checkboxes have a left margin of 50 pixels. And I gave this to you, you need to use margin left 50 pixels. So there's a selector to select if, um, elements that are checked. And it just looks like this. It's a pseudo selector, just like nth of type. So we need to say what we're looking for that's been checked. So I'm just going to say all inputs that have been checked because remember that checkboxes are input type equals checkbox. There are other elements that can be checked though, um, mainly the radio button. So this would also select any radio buttons that have been checked. And that's fine for now. So it looks like this, input, colon, checked. And what we wanna do is use margin left 50 pixels. So this is a little preview of what we're coming up um, on in some of the future videos. When we add this in, it's going to add some space on the left side of the checkbox. So you can see the ones that are checked moved over. And if I check this one, now this is checked and it moves over to the right, 50 pixels. If I uncheck them, they move back over to the left. So that's checked. The next one, this is probably my favorite, make the label elements all uppercase without changing the HTML. So I mentioned you'll definitely want to look that one up, and that's because uh, we definitely haven't gone over this. So to start, let's just select all label elements, and then let's say that I don't know how to make them uppercase without changing the HTML. So let's pull open Google and do a search. And this is something that I definitely have done before. So let's go up and do a search, CSS, uppercase. You can see the first thing that pops up is text transform. In text transform, it says it specifies how to capitalize an element's text. It can be used to make text appear in all uppercase or all lowercase or with each word capitalized. So then we scroll down and take a look at the syntax and it looks like we have capitalize, which will capitalize the first letter, uppercase and lowercase. So we want uppercase. So text transform uppercase. And what I just did there was not just to show you something. It's actually something that I do all the time, which is looking things up, going to Google, typing CSS, blah, 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 CSS uppercase, CSS transparent, whatever I'm looking to do. And I just look at the search results because there are so many properties to recall, you cannot remember all of them. So this is one of the more obscure ones, definitely. And if we refresh, this is for labels, which are down here. So let me just get rid of that, just to show you one more time. These are the labels. And when we add this in and refresh, they are uppercased. So next up, we have make the first letter of the element with ID special green and 100 pixel font size. So to target the first letter, that's another one that we might want to look up. CSS first letter and see what we get. So it looks like there's another pseudo selector. The first letter CSS element selects the first letter of the first line of a block. So if we take a look at an example, first letter, let's go ahead and try that. We want to first select the ID special and then first letter of that. And we want to make it green and 100 pixels in font size. So color green and font size 100 pixels. Save. And that element is right here. So keep an eye on the first letter. We refresh and we get this giant green eye. Next one make the H1 elements color change to blue when hovered over. So this one is actually pretty common um, to have some sort of effect when you hover over something. Usually it's pretty subtle, maybe a button that you hover over it and there's a small shadow that appears or the color shifts very slightly to look like um, you know, some sort of 3D perspective or something to give you just a little bit of interactivity without being distracted, uh, distracting. So we're gonna select the H1 and this actually is all H1s, but in this case, it's only one. And the pseudo selector is hover. And whatever we put in here is only applied when a user hovers over the element. 
So color blue, we save. Here's our H1. And if I hover, it turns blue. When I stop hovering, it goes back to whatever it had before. So finally, make the A elements that have been visited gray. And as you can see, the two A elements, these two links, are actually both links to Facebook, which are links that I've visited before, which is why they're purple. Chrome, by default, will make all visited links purple. So let's put a link that I definitely haven't been to before. I'm just going to make something up to start. And I'll show you, I refresh the page, it's now blue because I haven't been there. So let's leave it that way for now. I'm not going to click it. And we want the visited ones to be purple rather than I'm sorry, we want the visited ones to be gray rather than purple. So we select A tags. The pseudo selector is called visited. And then we're going to make it gray. Save. And if we refresh, keep your eye on this one here. I'll make the font a little bigger. It's currently purple because I've been there before. I refresh, now it's gray. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that exercise. There's a lot to unpack there, a lot of different selectors. And one thing I'll add is that for every solution that I have, or almost every single one, there are at least one or two more ways of achieving the exact same outcome. So if you had something that differed from me but still worked, that's great. Feel free to add it in the comments, um, share it with other people. It's totally valid. This is just the way that I would have done it. Um, one other thing, obviously the site is not particularly attractive. This is not a real site. We will be working on a real project very, very soon in the next exercise video. We're actually going to make a little blog site that is a little bit better designed. It looks much nicer than this. This is more just a practice exercise.